Welcome to Anderson Penn's Sunday Brunch Menu 2. Uh, today is Sunday, April 10th, 2022. My name is Eric, and you are? Brian. Brian what? Brian Anderson. Brian Anderson. I think we're at Anderson Penn's, aren't we? Yes, we are. Happy Sunday, Brian. How are you? Fantastic. Fantastic. I'm glad to hear it. Did you know that today is, according to my calendar, Palm Sunday? Palm Sunday, which apparently means one week from today is Easter. Yes. Uh, do you like Easter? Sure. Sure. I like Easter. Do you know, just off the top of your head, how they make uh, decide on the date for Easter? It's very complicated. It's, and I don't it's remember. It's so complicated that as a child, I read it and I said, I have to remember this. It's the first Sunday after the first full moon, after the first day of spring in the Northern Hemisphere. So that's apparently next Sunday, which means we must have a full moon between now and Some, next yeah. Sunday. Okay. So watch out for that. And since we're talking about holidays, I will remind everyone, 259 days until Christmas. Just so you know. And before we go any further, you can tell me a joke, right? But in a minute, because before you tell me a joke, I want to ask everyone who's watching, please like this video. And Brian would appreciate it if you would subscribe to this channel. I am done. You may tell me a joke. Why did the room full of married people seem so empty? The room full of married people seem so empty. I don't know. Tell me, please. There wasn't a single person there. Very good. I like that. A play on words, as it were. Um, I have one. I have forgotten it. So I'm just going to look it up. <laughs> what do you call... Oh, we, we did bring coffee this time. I said something about coffee last time. I have my coffee. You have your coffee. Yes. What do you call coffee with an old friend? Cacciapino. Cacciapino. A cacciapino. Okay. So, that's it. No joke off this time. Nope. Just a couple of jokes each. And... I did make a little bit of a program here. We're going to try it, see how it goes. And next up, I have new acquisitions. Great. And it doesn't have to be like a pen you got just this past week. Oh, good, because nobody Cause knows about that I, one yet. <laughs> we'll find out in a couple of weeks, because you won't be here next week. Lisa yes. won't be here. Um, so what pen newish acquisition have you per have you brought to uh, share, show and tell? I, I think the last, the last pen that I bought was uh, uh, the Sailor Blue Dawn. Uh, 21 king of pen it's big and gorgeous uh and does it have sparkles it has sparkles blue sparkles gold trim it's got apparently it's ink got dropping ink. going out of it uh that neat 21 oh that that's the one special nib yep, yep. The, the nib engraving on that is never before seen you have a paper towel there <laughs> i was hoping to go through something without uh yeah, there's ink all over it. Did I just see you ink this up? Yes. Yeah, yes, okay. So this yeah. is newly inked. Yeah. I was going to ask if I could use it to write with, but I don't want to touch it at the moment. <laughs> I don't want to touch it at the moment. Here. There we go. There we go. Here, you can do it. Beautiful pen. Beautiful. And King of Pen is a nice size. The Pro Gear is especially nice because it's it's a little bit shorter. Um, and uh, it, it's the, t the taper just makes it uh, a little bit nicer, I think. Uh, but this uh, one happens to be serial number one. Oh, that's right. Uh, I and, knew when I saw that. Oh, and Brian's taking that one. Yeah. Well, I wasn't planning on. I wasn't planning on keeping one, and I decided, you know, that I, I didn't need to have. Oh, and it got me. And it got you. Yeah. Cut. So, stop. <laughs> stop, stop the video. <laughs> Justin, I'm kidding. So <laughs> took me serious. Yeah. So that, that, that's my latest. That's beautiful. Yeah. That is beautiful. Serial number one of how many? I forget. Five hundred. Five hundred. Very very nice. So I, I like the barely noticeable sparkles on. It's that just thing. enough to be interesting. Yeah, um, and that nib. I mean, what can you what can you say about that nib? I do have a new acquisition. Okay, uh, it's not not something I got in the past week. Um, Platinum Preppy came out with uh, those Wa special yes. edition or yes. limited edition, or whatever they were yep. called, and mm -hmm. I wanted the the one with the cherry the blossom, Sakura. the Sakura. Yeah. And um, of course, we sold out of them. We still yep. have some of the others, but yes. the Sakura yep. was very popular. Mm -hmm. um, but these, somebody had this for sale at the Philadelphia Pen Show, and somebody I know got it there and sent it to me. <laughs> so thank you, thank you. And I have never inked it up, and I thought, I'm going to ink this up okay. for Sunday brunch. And so uh, to get, you all saw me do that. <laughs> uh, to get ready, I emptied I, I've the, seen accidents start that way, I actually. emptied the cartridge because okay. I was going to put the ink in there. And then I said, no, I'm going to eyedropper this. Okay. Uh, and Steph said, no, there's a hole in the bottom. And I said... I don't think there's a hole in the bottom. So I decided to eyedropper it. So I brought 
some grease. Everything but a napkin. <laughs> Everything but a napkin. I would probably put an O-ring here if mm -hmm. I had one, mm -hmm. but I don't, so I will not. Um, but I also said, look at that gray. Now, I would have called that a feed up until last week when you showed me the Parker 51 that has something that looks kind of like it that you yeah, called a collector. A collector. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna, from now on, I'm going to call this a collector. Uh, and I said, look, that's a gray collector. It doesn't really go with the pen. So I just got... Uh, red. Okay. Uh, and we're going to play swap. We're going to play swap because not only is that close enough in color, mm -hmm. it has an 05 nib. And this is a fine, so I'm assuming it's an 03. So yes. I get a little more ink on the yep. paper. So I think what I will do is instead of swapping nibs and, 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 uh, yeah, you don't want to pull that out. I'm just, just going to put this the right section. there. Yep. The whole section. And I'm not going to need this. Okay. And I'm not going to need this. But uh, I'm going to first put uh, a bit of silicon grease here. Yeah, you don't want it to. You don't want it to leak. Or, no, or, or maybe happens. you do. <laughs> uh, so we'll just. And I always tend to put too much. Is that a problem? It's not. It's not really a problem. Not a problem. You don't use your hands. Uh, I do if I'm at home, but I'm not going to have access to a sink after well, this. Okay. You don't need a sink. He just want me to get as dirty as you. And then I usually do that and put it mm -hmm. back like that and then do this. And then the fun starts. Yeah. Can I, can I look at this one for a second? Yeah. Absolutely. See, normally I would just go. Just use your fingers? Just use your fingers. Dig in there. And, and then that way, that way you can also get it into oh. the. So you never then use a Q-tip? No. Oh. No. All right. No. Learning from someone who knows. That's how I would do it. Well, then that's how I will do it in the future. Very nice. So, I mean, I was told, I don't remember now from whom or where, that it's possible to put too much grease. Uh, on this, since on you're this screwing thing, up, it's it, going to come yeah, out. I, you know, it can't be too much. So, Chances uh, are you'll put too little on before you put too much. Steph is making monthly videos of her top five inks, and we're mm -hmm, picking a mm -hmm. color every month. Uh, she has already done turquoise. We've recorded green, hasn't been published yet. She's currently working on her top five pinks, and one of them is Colorverse Fabulous Las Vegas, and she's already written it out, and I got to see it, and let me tell you, it it's is fabulous. fabulous. Yeah. And you like you like pink. No, I don't like pink. Pink, pink likes me. Suit, yes. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to see this, but it's a uh, it's uh, got the the shimmer in it. Yeah. And if yeah. I swirl it around, you probably can't see that, but it's fabulous. So I yeah. said, I for this pen, I need this this ink. Yeah, I don't think you got it all though. I think there's still some sediment. Really? On the bottom. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's a lot of it. Yeah. Now see that we can see, and it is gold, and it, it really. On the on the page that she wrote, really, I, really I'm not sparkles. I'm not going to show the page here because that's for her video. Yeah, um, it really is fabulous. <laughs> I mean, there's, they 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 named it correctly. Yeah, I'll make sure you get the full. And then, I suppose once you put this in a pen, especially if you eyedropper it, every time you go to use the pen, you you're better gonna do a to, lava lamp. You're going to have thing. to lava lamp yeah. it, yeah, as Lisa would say. Yeah, not. Uh, uh, it's lava lamp, not martini. Not martini, yes. I think we're done with this part here for now. And it should it should so be, it should be noted. Here, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, it should, should be, be noted every time you you unscrew or you take a um, your pen apart to add more ink, you should always uh, put a little bit extra that's uh, uh, silicone on it. Every time uh, I clean my Pelican, which I'm using for ink of the week, mm -hmm. so I'm cleaning it weekly. I take the nib off yep. to clean it, and I always. Regrease it, but I'm not using my finger, and I'm not putting as much as I guess I should be putting on there. Oh, sorry, Brad. Oh, that's that. just gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, that is something, isn't it? Did you get all the sediment in, at once and there, or no, what? No, it's just very heavily <laughs> sedimented. It's very shimmery. Jeez. That's beautiful. Um, so I don't know how long this is going to take to actually fill that non-feed what do we call it collector the collector if you want to call it that but we're gonna we're going to assume that it has sealed yeah, you're gonna that's seal. gonna take a while 
So we'll come back to a writing sample. But I suppose I could take a little bit of this. I don't know if it's, how often you have to shake it. Uh, I bet you it's already yeah, got it's already settled. It's, it's already settling, yeah. Look at that, how quickly it settles. Yeah, this is something you have to shake as you're writing. Yeah, well, not shake, but yeah. No. So it's start, finally starting to get in there. Oops. Oh, that came out quickly. So I'm gonna have to grind that pen. Well, see, now we got the, see a little bit of it yeah. settling in there. Yeah. We'll come back to this in a little while. But that was fun. It's a fine mess you're making here, sir. Isn't it though? <laughs> Good thing I brought that. Oh, all over my hands. I can even see if you just wiped it up even on Yeah, the, but I, the, I see it from here. I don't know yeah. if you can see. Yep. I'll bet uh... Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. It's just, it's fabulous. It's fabulous. In the right light, <laughs> <laughs> under the right conditions, it is, like most of us, fabulous. Yeah, so now you can see it. It's starting to come out there nice. So... There is my newest acquisition, and I nice. think you can just do this all day. Yeah. I wonder if these little particles will get caught up in, get caught up in the collector and impede the flow. It's uh, possible. It's entirely possible. Yeah. I don't think so. I think they're smaller than the yeah. space between the fins. But um, if it stops writing completely, I will you'll, let you'll you know. know. You'll know. Yeah. Um, that's newest acquisitions. Um, show and tell I have next, and we're talking about um, vintage pens this week. You're going to yes. show me and everyone how to identify a quality vintage pen that you find in the wild. So I thought we should bring vintage pens to show and tell, and you brought something extraordinary. Uh, this actually, um, this is a special pen for me. Um, the ma manufacturer is, uh, is, a, is a little bit unknown at this time. Um, I, I, thought I, I thought I had a picture of this pen in a, in a book, but I, I could not find it to save the life of me this morning. Uh, it's very similar to uh, something that Century Pen would have produced. Um, and Century was a pen company out of Whitewater, Wisconsin. Uh, but this is a real, real neat pen. And, and, and there's a little story behind this pen. Um, Lisa and I used to see a, a gentleman by the name of Presnell Wood. Uh, down at the Dallas Pen Show and an Ohio Pen Show and a couple other shows. Really nice, uh, nice gentleman. Uh, was a minister and uh, always left shows on, on Saturday so he could go to church on Sunday. But he, he, he was well known for having uh, very nice vintage pens. And I saw this and as stories usually go, I didn't, I didn't get it. Lisa knew I was interested in it. So she actually called Presnell, uh, bought the pen and, and had it shipped to me. Uh, for uh, I believe it was for my birthday one year. So happy birthday! Uh, and uh, Presnell uh, unfortunately uh, passed away last month. So uh, I thought this was a, a fitting pen. But uh, this is, is 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 a neat pen because it's unlike some of your other pens of the period. It's actually a sleeve filler. So this is gold filled filigree uh, on a here. Sleeve filler. I'm still stuck on sleeve filler. Okay. So uh, unlike a lever filler. Uh, or a button filler. This one actually has a sleeve, so you pull the barrel out, and then essentially it's, it's like a also Aerometric. called a thumb filler. Um, but you would you would use this to press the just like a, a, a lever filler, press the bar to press the sack to fill the pen. Um, this pen came to me with a, a really nice Aiken Lambert number two nib, uh, and I'm an Aiken collector, so. Um, but really, really a lovely pen. It can actually be posted. Wow. Um, it's, it's super long, though. I mean, sure, that's way too long. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, even the, the unposted length is, uh, is pretty nice. Does that happen to be a flexible nib? Uh, it's got a little flex to it, yeah. So, flex, but not what you'd call. Oh, oh, that's flexy. Aiken nibs are really great. 
Yeah, they're a, a favorite of yours, aren't yes. they? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Not just the nib, but the company itself. The company itself, yep. Eventually uh, bought out by Waterman, Ellie Waterman. But. So uh, when a, uh, is this black hard rubber underneath it? This is, this is hard rubber, yes. yes. And it's covered in, did you call it a filigree? It's, it's a gold-filled filigree overlay. Yeah. So uh, an overlay. This is mm -hmm. called an overlay. Mm -hmm. Why do you use the word filigree? Uh, because it's cut out, it's pierced. So you could have an overlay that's that's solid. Okay. Uh, but in this case, they they cut out each one of these you know little spaces here, these voids, to reveal the material underneath. So this is not just an overlay; it is a filigree overlay. Filigree overlay, yeah. And you say it's gold. It's gold filled. Gold filled. Yeah. And um, where you're not sure the manufacturer. It's it's very similar to Century um, Century pen, but there's no marking on it. Uh, and the nib is obvious. It's obviously a replacement because Aiken Lambert didn't make anything right. like this. So, very very nice, but very so, contemporary with the pen. So, and and yeah, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. So, I have a vintage pen that I brought. Um, Justin, can you get me a, a Caveco, the black one that I? The, thank you very much. We'll just talk amongst ourselves while. <laughs> Justin, I should have thought of this because the pen I brought is a Caveco Sport. Is it a but it, it's Well, it has we have a markings on it. I don't know if they're marked. He's going to come back with the regular black. I'm going to say go back and get the gears. No, no, that's fine. I just I just wanted to show the size difference because this is going to be much smaller than the modern uh, sports. Uh, shorter. Yeah, um, the, the modern Caveco Sports uh, have a much longer barrel that sticks out here. Thank you. Get the gears. You got the one I like. You did. Yeah. So, um, 1929 ish to today, the difference is uh, amazing. In Almost length. 100 years. Yeah, and the length. But this is a safety filler, which is not something. It took me forever to find this. I knew yes. they existed. Yes. I'd go to pen shows all the time and go to every dealer. Caveco Sport safety filler. No, don't have it. They, they got sick people, of hearing people you. People thought you were nuts, right? Yeah, they thought yeah. I was nuts. But I had seen one or two uh, previously, so I know they, knew they existed. Finally, Sarge found one in Europe for me. Uh, I think Poland, as a matter of fact. Okay. Uh, so a safety filler, of course, you open, uh, Always holding it up. nib up, yep. Because there is no nib. Oh, there's no. There's no nib. <laughs> It's actually in there. Yeah. And at this point, it's an eyedropper filler. So mm -hmm. you put ink in there. So if you don't open it up like that, the ink will fall out. You will make that mistake exactly yeah, once. Exactly once. <laughs> the other mistake you can make, I haven't. So you, you twist the bottom and the, the nib mm -hmm. comes out. The other mistake you can make is to try to close it now yes. without retracting yeah. the nib first. Yeah. Now, some manufacturers like Mike Moore actually had a little had pin on the inside right. that will, will hit a spot on the feed so you to, so can't you do that. Can't, you'll you'll uh, notice it. Apparently, first. it was a problem. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, I have taken this apart. <laughs> Much to my chagrin. Yeah, you didn't like that. Well, especially after you dropped it on the counter. Well, you know, things happen. <laughs> this is black hard rubber. Now, tell me uh, what scares me about black hard rubber. Uh, black hard rubber, especially pristine black hard rubber, um, it's only black really once, right? So... Uh, Water can discolor hard rubber that's been exposed to UV uh, radiation, so uh, ultraviolet light. Um, if you, if you have moisture on your hands and you touch a, an affected piece of hard rubber, you'll instantly discolor it and it'll turn off. So that's why you see so many. In fact, even if you compare the yeah or or this one, yeah, we, one. this one that's um, even better example. I'm not sure what this is. Waterman is one and fifty two and a half. Um, so this was the same color. Yes. And you can yeah. see. If you unscrew it. That this was the original color. Yep. Uh, but what color do you call this now? It's black. But it's a really washed out grayish black. <laughs> olive, so, really olive. Olive. Yeah. That's why this pen never sees the light of day. I, I, I don't ink it. I don't use it. I don't take it out of its case because if I were to ink it, this is why I took it apart. I know you advised me not to, but I wanted to clean it. And I can't just hold it under water. Right, right. Because this is the section, so it's it's normally deep inside the cap. Most of, yeah, most of the time your your sections in uh, is going to be protected from UV radiation. Right, so it but it's still control. just a guess. We it's don't just, know. It is a guess. Yeah. Uh, so I took it apart so that I could clean the inside. 
Uh, and since I have it apart, I'm going to grease those. Would be a wise choice. And I think I'm going to use a... So we'll look at the So the mechanism here, this pin sits in a, a slot inside the, the barrel. And then so this just rotates up as you twist it. That goes through there. They are fascinating. Yeah. They are fascinating. Um, I don't think I told you, but when I first got into fountain pens, not so very long ago, certainly after you, I swore I would never get a modern pen. I only wanted vintage pens. <laughs> um, because I like the history that, I mean, this is 1929. Yes. Who has owned this pen? Where yep. has it been? What has it written? I like, I, not that I can ever know that stuff, but I like to know that it has a history. And I swore, there's two things I swore. I would never buy a modern pen and I would never spend more than $100 on a pen. First day. <laughs> <laughs> then I went to the LA Pen Show. Um, so yeah, obviously now I do buy modern pens and I do spend more than $100 on a pen. It's hard not to. It's very hard not to. There are a lot of, I obviously just, there are a lot of good pens under $100. I just $100. figured there were plenty of good pens out there for under $100, and that's true. And see here, you could be using your fingers, but now we're getting fibers all over. All over. So I didn't know I could use my fingers on this. You just use your fingers on everything. I just, you? well, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you wash your hands, you're the, good the fibers to go aren't going to bother me too much. Okay. Um, but, I mean, this pen, a, a Caveco, Safety filler cannot be had for a hundred dollars. No. So absolutely. if you want this, it's, it's pretty you have to change what you're saying there. Yeah, there are a lot of great, great vintage pens that can be had for. Oh yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Um, my first vintage pen uh, was a Waterman Fifty Two that I got at the LA Pen Show from. She's no longer with us. Oh, um, Susan Worth. Susan Worth, and I'll tell you why. Susan did something interesting where she had all her pens inked and yep. you could actually sit yep. there and write with them, which uh, is unusual for a pen show. Yeah, she, that was that was always her thing. Every pen was inked and ready to go. And then at the end of the show, they would clean, they would all, clean every yeah. single one before they tore down. It was amazing. So I don't believe I still have that pen, but that was the first. My first pen show purchase was a Waterman 52 from Susan Worth. Okay. All right, so we got that nice and tight. I think that's in there good now. Are we filling this today? We're going to put some should. of this fabulous no, Las no, Vegas no, in there? fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I did bring some Waterman. Um, okay. Mysterious, did I get? Mysterious Blue. Mysterious Blue. And a fresh... And you've never, you've never inked this pen? No. Right here on the... Yeah, because inking it requires eventually you're going to have to clean it. And I never wanted oh, yeah. to clean it. But now that I can take it apart, the the waterman will be able to is super easy. Yeah, to that's clean out. that should be nice. And that's why most washable. of the repair guys use guys and gals use uh, mysterious blue for for testing and cleaning. Although my ink of the week last week was the Herbon Bouquet Danton that practically cleaned itself. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think most people would use a pipette here. Uh, but I, I'm not a big pipette fan, so I'll, yeah, you you do have some a little bit easier to get a, and all of the mechanism inside the, the nib, the feed, and everything is in the way, so you yeah, can't so everything just, that we that we just saw there. You can't just squirt it in there yeah, it at be, speed, no, because and then I wonder if I've overfilled it. <laughs> well, you'll find out. Probably not. The, the beauty of it is, is it sits in sits in ink all the time, so it's always ready to go. And then you have to hope that it made a seal. Well, we're gonna we're gonna find out today, aren't we? Right. And this is probably a posting pen. Now, see, they don't post as deeply as these either. Yeah. So that becomes a, a usable pen size. Here it is, first time. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Now, a little flex. I mean, I don't I don't want to push it too hard. You'd be looking for that nib for a long time. <laughs> Would never find it. <laughs> Would you like to try it? Oh, yes, please. Now, after they did the safety, they did come up with a piston filler, and those can be found. Uh, you can find them on eBay. Often they'll be at pen shows. And I don't think there was anything between that and the cartridge filler. I think it goes safety, piston, <laughs> cartridge. Lovely. 
Very nice pen. Yeah, now I get to use it. And it doesn't appear to have leaked from where I took it apart either. That's good. Just don't put it in your pocket. Uh, so, uh, uh, another reason I have never used this is because it is in such good condition. I didn't want to it, find one it, in this good it's of a condition. It's an exceptional example for sure. I, I wanted know. to find a user uh, because I had hoped to have it uh, to have a Urushi put on it. I, I can't. I, I, can't I can't allow you to. I put can't a do that to this too. one. This one should be. In a, a, I would say the Caveco Museum, but. Caveco today isn't the Caveco that was. No, it's no. changed ownerships, but no. they're still making these pens. Yep. And and I don't know how many generations this would be, but um, this is also a very nice pen. Yes. Yeah. It's. I mean, Absolutely. I wonder. I think as soon as they got away from safety filler, they became longer. I think the they'd the, have to because the, the, the mechanism piston, for the, the piston, piston would filler have to be longer. was longer. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. Welcome to the world. Uh, generally speaking, I keep it in its case. It came with a pencil That's that nice. I have never used. <laughs> what size lead is a pencil? I have no idea. Huge. Maybe you know. Oh, it's a little clutch, huh? Does it, uh... Oh, there we go. Oh, that's... Does it have lead in it? It's got to be 0.9, yeah. 0.9? That is huge. Usually vintage is bigger. No, I don't know if it's going to... Yeah, so it extends and then you... Okay. Nice. Probably unusual just to have the pencil. Maybe, but it was a safety filler yes. that I wanted. It was, it was. It became a thing that was unobtainable, so I just had to have it. <laughs> you know how that is. Yes, you know I, that I is. might. I might know how that is. Um, thank you for the show and tell. I have um, someone suggested a game of some kind in the comment section, so I made one up. Okay, and uh, I'm calling it Quiz Brian Anderson. I'm going to take a drink too. Happy brunch before my coffee gets cold. So I have three quiz questions that I will put to you. Um, I think one of them, or I'll give you three jokes. One of them you should know the answer to. Okay. <clears throat> one of them you might know the answer to. And one of them I'll be very surprised if you know the answer to. May 1st, 2010. And if you get two out of three correct, I'm going to give you a sample of my my current ink of the week. One of my, did you just pull that off the shelf? I did. I just pulled that off. The <laughs> so, okay. Um, for you, Mr. Anderson, on our YouTube channel, we recently posted Steph's top three under twenty-five. So that would be her top three fountain pens mm -hmm, under twenty-five dollars. Mm -hmm. In three guesses, can you name two of her choices? Uh, varsity and uh, go. Tusby go. Tusby go. You, that is correct. Do you happen to know the third? The third one was the uh, the Kakuno. Yeah, she likes that. The little smiling face. Yeah, that's the one I said you you should know. Okay. Here's one that... I have to get all three to get the ink? No, just two. Just two, okay. So if you get this one right, you're in like Clint. Uh, I should ask you the one I don't think you're going to know, but I'm not. I'm going to stay with uh, pen related. In our last podcast, and you were there. We talked about the new limited edition Esterbrook SD Candy, which mm -hmm. features a diamond cast material from Mackenzie Penworks containing a background of Yinmin Blue. Prior to the discovery of Yinmin Blue in 2009, how long had it been since the last natural blue had been discovered? Uh, was, wasn't it something like a centuries? How many? Two? Yes, exactly. <laughs> More than two centuries. Because we had a little conversation yeah. about how do you discover it. Yeah. 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 Okay. So you have won the oh, ink. Nice. But just for fun. Okay. What's and the, what's this the one, one you don't think I'm that I just pulled this off the internet somewhere. Coca-Cola has announced uh, a new flavor. Okay. Uh, Coca-Cola. And this is, I'm not making this up. They're calling it Coca-Cola Zero Sugar Bite. B-Y-T-E. Okay. So computer related. And the new flavor, Bite, is supposed to taste like what? And I'll give you three choices. Is it supposed to taste like A, computer memory, B, pixels, C, artificial intelligence? One of those is correct. <laughs> I know. Just take a guess. Uh, pixels. It is pixels. <laughs> it is pixels. <laughs> According to the senior director of strategy at Coca-Cola, quote, Coca-Cola Coca Zero Bite makes the intangible taste of the pixel tangible. 
Our fans are intrigued. The abstract nature of the flavor description offers an opportunity for debate and discussion. Are, are they, you ready to discuss how crazy this is? What are they putting LSD in there? I don't know. <laughs> so, bite. I, I, I saw that. I said I couldn't believe it. That, that may be that uh, that guy's last last job. <sighs> I have no idea. So I just thought that was crazy. Yeah, but congratulations Woo. on your win. It's a very nice ink. You saw it yes. on our last yep. podcast. And uh, now for the meat of the matter, you're going to teach me how to identify and all of everybody at home how to identify a quality vintage pen found in the wild because this this does happen. You you see them on eBay or you go to a pen pen. Here's what happens if you go to a pen show. You do see vintage pens. Yes. And you talk to the person behind the person selling the pen, and they'll say that is the best pen on the table. It is and, absolutely. I mean, how do I know if it is? Well. They're a salesman. Yeah, I understand that. And and they're allowed to, but I would like to have a little knowledge. Okay, are we go have we gone to a pen show here? <laughs> well, I wanted to bring some examples, uh, and then I have some some model specific examples of things. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I've thrown in this batch. I've actually thrown one pen of mine from my collection is in here. So, uh, um, well, there's an Astrobook, but that doesn't look like. Okay. Um, so. A couple things before we start. Um, when you're out buying pens, uh, you need to decide what your purpose is. Are you buying them because you like to look at the vintage pen and you want it to write? Um, I have a collector's mindset where I may be looking for a particular example, not necessarily caring how it writes because in my collection, a vast majority of the pens I have, I don't use. So uh, if you're looking for a pen to write, you might have different qualifications than a person who is looking to buy a, a pen uh, as part of a collection. Right. Or, uh, if I wanted or, one that writes, I might ask, yes. has it been restored? Yeah, so uh, the first thing, uh, we need to make some assumptions and, and I, they're very strong assumptions. Uh, number one, and it'll save, if you, can, if you can get past this, it'll save you a lot of time, a lot of money and a lot of heartache. Assume every pen you look at, unless you're buying it from a vintage pen dealer, needs to be restored. Right. So you're, if you're buying a pen on eBay or you find one at the local antique store, it's going to need restoration. It's going to need restoration. So what that means, we'll, we'll get to that in a bit, but you don't, don't worry about that part. Okay. Uh, most pens can be restored. Um, but um, this, I, I put them all facing you. Isn't that something? Uh, it was completely random. Las Vegas. Um, <laughs> So, um, this one is not facing. <laughs> so I brought a couple of pens in here and usually, and so what I look for uh, as a collector, there are, you should know what the, the tiers are. So we, we jokingly have three tiers. So we have first tier pens, which are essentially the big, big five, um, Parker, this, this pertains to essentially us brand pens, Parker, Schaefer, uh, Wall Eversharp, um, Waterman, and Conklin kind of comes in as the, the last of the, the Those big are five. tier one. Those are tier one. Then you have you have tier three, which is really inexpensive pens, uh, steel nibs, uh, some better than others. Uh, and then in tier two is kind of in the middle. That can be manufacturers that made really nice pens, but maybe didn't have as broad a distribution uh, as, say, Waterman. I and mean, Waterman is everywhere. Uh, they didn't have the marketing budget. They made gold nib pens, or they're a little better than third tier pens with steel nibs, but they're really high quality. So second tier is kind of in the middle. And then you'll you'll learn, as I say, there's 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 no no better experience than in preparation. Uh, you'll learn which pens slot in where, uh, and that kind of helps. So just because something's in tier one doesn't necessarily make it a good pen. There are tier one manufacturers that made really really bad pens. Um, so. Uh, if you know that, you instantly have some kind of idea. If you see a Schaefer, you know it's a good brand. It should be a good pet. So um, the other thing you should know is uh, don't try to save every pen. It's not your job to rescue. And I used to feel this way. I'd see a pen in the, in the antique mall and say, oh, I've got to have that. I can fix that. You can't fix everything. And um, if you try to save every vintage pen you see, uh, trust me, there, there are going to be more. Uh, you're going to end up with a huge parts box. So uh, these pens here all uh, 
are from are from my parts bin. So They're, these are from your parts. These are from so the these cannot bin. be saved. Uh, they could be. Oh yeah, absolutely. Some of them could be. Um, some are better than others, but if these, if this, is, this is a good example of something you might see in a uh, in a, an antique mall. Yes. So that being said, um, you know, so it, it's okay to walk away from a pen. You, you definitely see more. Oh, I've walked away from more pens than I've purchased. Yes, <laughs> and, 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 you know, and that's and that's the better that's the better end of it. If you can repair pens, then your 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 field is, your your scope is broadened. But um, uh, but if not, then no. Like I say, assuming it doesn't work, if you can't fix it, you need to add in thirty-five to fifty dollars for restoration fees, mm-hmm. plus shipping, plus any extra parts. So uh, that ten-dollar pen in the back of the cabinet that's missing a cap and it's missing this or it's broken that uh, may not be worth your while after um, after you've, you've, you've factored in all those costs. So I like to look for complete pens. Um, oh. Well, Unless, <laughs> excuse me. I have, a, I have a bad reputation for pens without nibs, but yes. uh, that that falls in from that collector part. Sometimes you, there there are only so many of certain um, hard to find brands. I have plenty of Parkers with no caps and no nibs, but the barrels are fantastic. They're modeled hard rubber. They're you know they're they're a very scarce pen. Um, and sometimes finding a nib is the easiest part because True. nibs were used in, in, in some cases for a, a long length of time. You can find another nib on a, a less scarce pen. Right. So you like complete pens, but a, missing a nib is not a, a deal breaker. If, for you. If, you, if you're a collector, missing a nib is not always a deal breaker. It's usually sometimes one of the easiest, easiest parts to find. Unless you have a Kaveco safety uh, card. Yeah. <laughs> forget it. Um, but you see, and that's the thing. You need to understand where... And this takes time to understand. It, it does. It does. I, I still make mistakes. I've been doing this for 20, gosh, 24 years now. Uh, I still make mistakes far fewer than I used to, but you, you just never know. So, um, and I guess the last thing I'll say before we start ripping in these is, you know, there was a thread actually on, online I, on one of the Facebook forums the other day talking about this. And uh, when you go into an antique store and you see pens like this, uh, try to avoid being that guy that's going to go in and is going to take a loop and inspect everything uh, and, and and manipulate them and start taking them apart because the people who work at those antique malls are going to get to know you and you want them to be able to help you. Uh, so a cursory overview of what, what makes a good pen uh, will help and then you don't have to... Uh, Irritate the, the people who work there. Oh, and that's specific to antique. Models. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. if I'm at a pen show and I'm thinking about maybe getting this pen, I will look at it with a loop. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially the nib. I don't know if there's but a nib in there. If, but... you, if you were to stay there and look at every one of these pens under Oh, loop, yeah. That would get tiring. That would get tiring. Um, and, uh, and and pretty soon they're not going to let you do that. So uh. they'll, they'll, they'll remember. But uh, that's my own personal thing. So what what is what is important to look for in a pen? So I look the first thing I look for is uh, if I'm not familiar with the brand, where is the pen marked, and how many times is the pen marked? Is the pen marked on the barrel? Is it marked on the clip? Is it marked on the lever? Uh, is it marked on the nib? Uh, in my opinion, if a company went so far as to mark their name and stamp it on the pen in multiple locations, they cared enough about the quality of that pen. And generally speaking, those pens are better made. Okay. So the more marks, the better. Generally, generally speaking. Speak. Well, there, there are some examples, uh, uh, some exceptions. That's the first thing you look for. Gold nib, of course, uh, typically better than most steel nibs. So if it's got a gold nib, it automatically gets an extra point. If it has a name stamped on that nib, extra point. Uh-huh. Um, there are plenty of what we might call second tier brands that used gold nibs and the gold nibs are fine, but they're all marked warranted. And so essentially, right. uh, and warranted nibs can be, you know, a number two nib can be small, it can be large. There's no, there's no sizing really uh, for them like today's nibs are. Uh, but uh, they will be marked warranted, essentially guaranteeing that that nib is solid gold. Uh, there was a problem for a period of time where companies would would have a nib that says gold plate, and then they would shove the plate part underneath the section so you couldn't see it. So it would say oh. 14 karat gold, when in fact it was plated steel. Huh. Um, so warranted nibs aren't that bad, but if they put their name on it, 
all the better. Um, the, the other thing we're gonna look at is, uh, so if it's got a steel nib, it, now, if you're looking at it to write, of course you want the nib to be in, in good working order. You want the tines to be uh, aligned. Uh, you wanna make sure that there is tipping if, there, if, if it is a tipped nib, and most of them are. Um, if, the, uh, if the nib is, is bent, you really should walk away, unless it's an exceptional piece and you, you're positive you can get the nib, but never assume you're going to be able to get any parts. Right. That's that's the rule. And um, uh, looking at a nib is especially when I will use a loop. Yes. If I'm yeah. thinking, okay, I want this, I want this pen. Now, wh what I do is is, is when I go into store, uh, and this this level has changed over the years, but I have a threshold. I say it's it's fifteen dollars. If it's under fifteen dollars, that's you know that's what two coffees and a and a, a couple of muffins at the coffee shop. If it's under fifteen dollars, I don't sweat it. Oh, okay. I'll so buy it. You buy it. If it's, it. If it's no good, chances. then I haven't invested that much money. You know, if it's if it's a lot more than that, then then we got to talk. But um, yeah, you, you can use it. Use a loop, but you, you should be able to get really good at at seeing uh, alignment on the nib. And uh, and if it looks if it looks reasonably close, if it's not bent uh, in any way, shape, or form, the nib is probably going to be fine. You want to make sure that the feed. Feed lines up properly, not too much gap between the end of the feed and the end of the nib so that it's set in right. Uh, if you're going to be using it, that doesn't matter. Now, um, you should know something about filling systems. Lever fillers are very common. Um, one of the most common filling systems you're going to come across. Uh, much easier to repair. Something that you even, anybody, almost anybody can do a lever filler repair. It's pretty simple. Um, so if you have a, uh, you, 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 you heard him say that because I've never done one. So some Sunday we're going to sit here and do a, a lever filler repair. Yeah. Um, also note as far as as far as value is concerned, any any kind of if you see that there's a big chip oh, yes, in there, big chip in there um, that does affect value. Now if you're going to use this as a writing pen and you love this this material uh, and you don't care about it, well then that's you know that's not a big deal. But finding a replacement cap. On just about any pen is not going to happen. It's, it's very difficult. You know, maybe Parker Fifty One is pretty pretty easy. Yeah, but, true. Um, but if you don't care about that, just don't overpay. Don't pay full retail for something that doesn't. Um, that's not all there. And essentially, I look at a pen in three parts. So the value of this pen is really in thirds. It's the cap, it's the barrel, and it's the nib. So if any any one of those three has any kind of damage to it. The price should be reduced accordingly. Okay. So in this case, this one, you know, it's got a bad cap. I mean, it still works, um, but I wouldn't pay full full price for this pen if I wanted it. Um, Which apparently you did. I you own it. I have no idea where this pen came from. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you see, I've got, a, and a lot of these are pretty these old pens, but you also notice uh, these third tier pens will have this this uh, very lightly plated trim. Uh, which which just it, it it comes off it right. looks bad uh, the material on this pen is actually pretty fantastic we've got a name on the clip but we've got a cheap gold plated nib oh and and then this is just and it, usually is it, is it marked anywhere besides the um, cap no hmm. no so this is I a mean, special special just... alloy it's not marked anywhere else I don't think on this one but these in these and generally speaking these these nibs are pretty terrible. So I don't know what pen this is. This is tier three. This is definitely tier three. Okay. This is an Arnold. Okay. This is an Arnold. Um, so um, here's another thing to look at. So this pen, uh, actually, I was surprised to find it actually worked. Um, but this pen, actually, if you look at the nib here, now the nib looks nice and clean. It looks straight. But if you look at the nib... Even from the side, you'll see that there's a little divot on top. So what they did is they took a flat piece of metal, they pounded it down to create the tipping on that dip, and, and that's how they, they did it. They didn't actually tip it. They didn't do oh, – interesting. Know, Esterbrook did this thing where they, they rolled it over and you then they cut the nib, nib out. Uh, this is a very, very cheap way to make a nib, uh, which tells you about the overall quality of pretty much the rest of the pen. Gotcha. Um, you know, this is another thing to look at too. You've got – lever box spread here, where if moisture gets in here or a sack breaks, this this little piece of steel that holds this lever in place 
will rust, will swell, and will cause. You you called it lever box spread. Yeah, yeah. So underneath this lever is a little box. No, yeah. actually, that's a. <laughs> uh. Uh, I've got an example here somewhere. Oh, maybe just surrounds. It's like a yes, frame to the yes, lever. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's, uh, I thought I had one, but we'll, we'll, we'll look at you. Oh, here we go. Um, so this is an actual lever box. Um, Waterman, Waterman did this to get around from the, get around the, the Schaefer patents. Um, but essentially, Waterman had this little box that the lever is pinned in, and then the box and the lever assembly is just lowered into the barrel. And then there are tabs on either side that are right. So they call it a box, but it's basically yes. a frame for the lever. Yes, and, right. and on these pens they don't have that. There's no box. The uh, the Where are they lever to just the, the the lever is there's a there's a round a semicircle uh, a pin or not pin but a wire essentially that fits in the barrel. Gotcha. Uh, that so this is a higher. Yeah, uh, actually, mode. actually, I hate these. Okay, <laughs> but, but compared uh, to this, compared to this, it, 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 and this is the reason. There's really no technical okay. benefit okay. either, but this is the reason why we have to assume that every pen doesn't work, uh, and it's most prevalent on Waterman's Eclipse is another one. Anyone that used a box style design like this. So what happens is when the sack is hard, when the sack gets hard. Um, and it's no longer pliable, when you lift the lever, you're actually putting stress on the joint here. And you can see this one here is actually cracked. So the lever actually, this one is oh, just, just broken. Around. It's okay. just broken. Um, so you, because it the, the lever has nowhere to go. It's not, it's, it's, it's getting uh, pushed right. back. And so what happens is the box just, it, it has, has to go somewhere. So the, the pressure forces it up and it breaks it. Um, so and we already assume that's a little better idea there. Uh, we already assumed it doesn't work, so let's not risk breaking this because finding a new lever box, uh, while not impossible, uh, is a very expensive repair. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're talking it's at least $40, $50 for the part, and then you have to put it in. Uh, and uh, it, it's not easy. So uh, if we assume it doesn't work, let's not try to break something. So if I find a, a lever filler in the wild, I should assume it doesn't work. Should I not? You shouldn't. Yeah, it, should it, I it's, not it really serves. It serves no purpose. We, we're assuming it needs to be replaced. The other thing that can the happen lever? is well, the lever lever is fine. We're assuming what needs to be. Replaced? We're, we're assuming that the sack and sack needs to be replaced. replaced. So we're going to assume if I find this in the wild, I'm going to assume that the sack is hard. Yes. And so I'm not going to operate the leather. The I, le well, lever. Well, 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 let's let, let's go this way. Would you trust a pen that has sat for 50 years? Would you trust the sack that's in it? I don't believe so, no. So we're going to take it on anyway. Right. So this here serves no purpose whatsoever. Testing that. It, it, there's, there's, it, right. You can fact, actually... You can break it. You can, you can, if it has a lever box, you can break it. You can break it. Uh, you, can bend, you can bend the J-bar. Uh, all sorts of bad stuff can happen. So there's no need to do that. Okay. So if, if, and if it's a lever filler and you've done one before or you know, they're fairly reasonably easy to fix. That's what you said, yeah. Yes. Anyone can do it is what you uh, said. Just about anybody can do it. Just about anyone. I'm sure there's someone who doesn't want to, but um, so that's uh, that's that. So if you get to know some of the, the filling systems, there's no need for you know, even can't even get it apart. But there's no no need to even take it apart. Um, and taking it apart is is just I think bad luck uh, and bad form uh, because if something happens when you try to take a pen apart uh, and it breaks, you just bought it. So in in most in, in almost every pen vendor at a pen show will jump all over if you start taking oh, a I section out. I would never even imagine yeah. doing that. I've had people try to do it. So. Wow. So you look for marks. Marks. You look for the, uh, the material of the nib. Yep. Um, and where else did we go? Um, well, it's a couple different materials too. So your plastics. Um, and understand, uh, well, let's talk about cracks and breakage. If, if there's cracks, plastic, yeah, can be, can be fixed. Uh, hard rubber cannot. There's nothing that really uh, welds hard rubber very well, um, and so once it's broken, it's it's broken. So if it's in a if it's in a tough spot, if it's on the threads uh, on the barrel, um, something that causes form, especially you know, or or if you have on a vacuum filling pen, like a snorkel or a touchdown, uh, if there's a crack anywhere that impedes the vacuum, then um, then the pen's not gonna not gonna fill properly. Um, so unless you're buying it as a uh, example for your, for your collection that you're not intending on using, um, you uh, you want to make sure there's no, really no cracks. 
That's a Parker 21. And the reason I brought that is, is they, they look sleek and modern. And uh, I know a lot of people like them. Uh, I've certainly been uh, voiced my, my disdain over this pen. <laughs> um, some of them write really well. The problem is, is the material used is not anything at all like the Parker 51. Uh, is very thin. And on these, you have to look very carefully. There's a crack right there. Oh, gotcha. Um, and so it's not really, it's not an easy fix to repair. Uh, just try to stay away from broken stuff in general. Yeah. I'm always, if I, I, and I don't usually go to antique stores, but I will go to pen store, pen sh shows, and there's lots of vintage pens to choose from. Yep. And you realize very quickly that I don't know what any of these pens are. I mean, I know who made that one. I know who yep. made that one, but I, I don't, didn't know that was a 21. And I, I would have assumed that was a snorkel, but I would have had to look. Um, this looks like a Waterman, but I have to inspect it. Um, I get overwhelmed. So what I prefer to do is look online or look in pen books and decide what I'm after. Uh, some other things you might run across, uh, wa uh, wall over sharp skylines. This is common. You'll see how there's a, a little gap here oh, yes. in the spring. Uh, the inner caps on these have a tendency to shrink and then they no longer stay tight. Uh, and sometimes you'll see it loosen up here um, in, in this one, while this one's got a gold nib, uh, this cap, you know, we would need to we would need to do something to fix that. Uh, and skylines have a tendency to be very brittle as they age, so taking these apart uh, is very uh, risky. Sometimes they, they can crack. Um, one other bugaboo: Waterman hundred year pens. Wow, this part just what crystallizes and, and, oh, and falls off and breaks right off. off. Yeah. So there are some people who do make make ends for those, but you know, again, you're talking a lot of money yeah. to fix a pen. I mean, it's got a gold nib on it. This is why uh, somebody always has a binder full of nibs at a pen show. Yeah, because yeah. you just pull a nib and you know, this is this is a, this is a lovely Parker um, Lucky Curve, except we've got a we've got a crack right here in the section. Oh, and it cannot be repaired. So it can't be repaired, and you know that's when you have a crack in the section. That's that's there's a lot of pressure there because as you're pushing down, you you have a tendency to, to flex that, hmm. and, and and it's not it's not going to get any better. You know if this crack were somewhere else, if it was in a cap, it wouldn't be a big deal. But uh, so essentially, what I have here is a really nice cap, a really nice cap, and somebody needs it. <laughs> yeah, somebody needs it. Um, but uh, but you know there's a and, and here's another example here. So this pen here has. A cracked cap. You know, there's no repair. Now that sort of that is not uncommon, though, for caps to crack right here, yep. especially if they don't have the cap ring, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just, I have seen that a lot. Um, yeah, and this is this is an extreme example of hard rubber that's... That is black hard rubber? Yeah. Wow. Poor thing. Yeah. So, not that this, you know, this doesn't that make doesn't, it... Yeah, it doesn't... doesn't exempt it from being a, an excellent writer. It's, right. You know, the, the nib is a little tweaked, so... As long as the, the tipping is still there uh, and it's not too bad off, it could be repaired by uh, a nib person. Right. So. What is that then? This is a, a De La Rue. It's an, oh, a, a Noto De La Rue. I saw the heart. I thought it was a Waterman. No, That's a, lot of a De La Rue. And this is oh. a, essentially, it's a, it's a plunger. It's a vacuum filling pen. Fills on the downstroke. Very interesting. So very popular, uh, and also this 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 type of filler actually made it uh, made it over to Japan, and a lot of Japanese pens, early Japanese pens, have this type of mechanism. Okay, so what have we learned? Uh, I still go by when I'm going pen shopping, which is always going to mm -hmm. be at a pen show. I make a list of three to five pens that I'm looking for specifically. Uh, otherwise, you get interested in every pen on yeah. every table. Yeah. Sometimes something will catch your eye, like this one. Oh, I've never, I have no idea what this is. So mm -hmm. how do I know if it's a quality? Um, I look for markings. The more markings, mm -hmm. the better. Mm -hmm. I look for the, uh, the, the, the material of the nib. Mm -hmm. um, just because it's steel doesn't mean it's horrible, but it's gold. And if it's gold yeah. with, the, with the manufacturer's name, it goes up a little further. It's got uh, it's a lever filler, but I'm just going to assume that it's not working. Right, right. Although if I'm buying this from a well-known vintage person at a pen show, I can say there probably be yeah yeah. What's if you're story? at a pen show, it's it's, it's obviously yeah, they know safe what they're to ask. About. You know, but but you if you're if you're at an antique store and you ask them if they no, they sack it, they're either. not going to know. 
And that's the other thing too, when, you, when you're looking at these pens, don't assume everything is flexible. Um, I know a lot of people want flexible and that's, it's all the rage and, and I understand it, but. You know, the problem um, is many of them are. So you're, you're, you tend to test them on your thumb just like you did. Yeah. You have to go very slowly. You have to go very Some slowly. Some nails. You, you have to know, you have to know what, how much pressure is too much. Um, and, and, you know, there's, they don't make these nibs anymore and there's only so many of them. So, uh, no, this is, this is a nice pen. What I, I believe I got this for a very good price. Uh, Under a hundred bucks? Yeah. 175? Probably about seventy-five. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a good pen. Uh, restore. That's a that's a a nice deal. A really good deal. Uh, I'll buy all I can at seventy-five. Uh, this one here. So this is a Swan. I think you showed me this the other day. Um, this is chased plastic. We've got the the black uh, lever that they did for a while. Uh, we've got Swan here. We've got their big imprint. This is probably marked on the end here too. Uh, yep, it's so got their number swan on it. marked, and then on the top too, and then on the top you get the swan logo. So, so swans, swans are marked everywhere. They're marked on the section. They'll be marked on the feed. They're, I mean, everywhere. Um, love, lovely company. So lovely it means names. they were tier one. They're well, they're kind of in the British tier one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's a whole different. That's a whole different okay. ballgame. Yeah. So uh, clip a little bit needs a little bit of adjustment, but uh, this 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 is a, this is a very good pen. Um, Quite lovely, and, and nice thing about it being plastic is you can get it wet. You can get it wet. You can get it wet. And yeah. what I really like about this one is the nib, because mm -hmm. it's it is a nice flexible nib. It's not the biggest nib. Yeah, uh, and you'll you'll find certain certain brands are more known for having more flexible nibs. So Swan but, is definitely one of them. Um, Conklin, um, Waterman, of course. But but this know. one I do ink because you can clean it so easy. Yes. Well, thank you. Anything? Any last thoughts on that? Uh, I'm sure there will be more thoughts, but uh, and, and I'm sure other now, people will have their own opinions. This is valuable information for anyone who might be going to the Chicago Pen Show, which is at the end of this month uh, and rolls over to May 1st, mm -hmm. um, because, well, it's not the Ohio. Ohio has lots and lots of, no, no. Who's got the, the most vintage? What's the vintage show? Uh, Chicago is known for being vintage. Yeah, Ohio. Yeah. Is it Ohio? In D.C., yep. Well, D.C. has everything, yeah. but Ohio has really got... Mostly vintage, I yes, would say. Yes, yeah, yeah. And Chicago is no slouch for vintage. Well, yeah, both and of them. In fact, you'll be there. Both of them have have auctions, and the auctions are heavily. And they're heavily interesting. Vintage, yes. They're in, even if you don't participate, they're fun because you get to see the pens and read what they are, and then see how popular they are, mm -hmm. and you can glean information from that. Yeah, you'll you, you'll you'll see. You know, I, I've seen pens go for sale, and you look at it and you go, well, "Why did that go for seven hundred dollars?" Then you got to find out. You have to find out. And you have to find out. Uh, do you have another joke for me? Uh, I do have another joke for you. Let me drink this first. Or I'll... Hit me. What do you get when you teach a wolf to meditate? What do you get when you teach a wolf to meditate? A werewolf. A werewolf. Very good. Uh, I'm going to get this wrong if I don't look at it, so I'll just review it. I'll put the punchline in the, in the question. I guess, what is the name of the most popular dating app in Prague? Check it out. Checkmate. Ah! Checkmate. <laughs> so I'll be here next week for Sunday brunch, but you won't be. I will not be. I'll be in Chicago. You'll be in Chicago, but Lisa will be here. I think we're going to scheme, Lisa and I, we're going to talk about how to get a friend or a loved one interested in fountain pens. Okay. Uh, because that's what we're here for, right? <laughs> Everyone should be into fountain pens. Um, and you have fun in Chicago. You're going to the uh, show, and then you're going to the store because you have an event well. That's, at the that's store. coming up at the end of the month. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh. You're just going down to relieve Lisa. I'm just day. going down for my my usual six week trip. Usual six week trip. Lisa will be here. She'll be doing the podcast. She'll be doing brunch. Mm -hmm. She's going to drive over and, and see Lindsay. Go to Minnesota. Yeah. Go to Minnesota. So that's all I have. You have anything else? No, that's it. Thank you very much. Happy Sunday, everybody. See you next time. Bye.